Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It's Brent with Lycans Motorsports. This is Mr. Ron's RPM air gap intake manifold as back from Mr. Joe. It's been ported and uh, if you remember from the last video we made, uh, we Joe picked it up about 70 CFM, which is a tremendous amount. So there's how she is. Divider nice and, and bull nosed, which is the way that it should be. Uh, most importantly, these entries into the the bottom part of the plenum and the top part of the plenum all rounded out nice. And of course, port matched on, on the ports on the end of the runners here. So we're going to finish this engine up. And all we have to do is wait on the dyno to come. Or to be fixed anyway. So... Here's what we're looking at. I've already wiped all this down with some lacquer thinner on, on a nice clean cloth. Got our mating surfaces all cleaned up. Looking at the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a shop rag down in here to make sure this hole is plugged. And then uh, we're gonna test fit our manifold with our gaskets and everything. If you remember, I had the flanges whacked about 60 thousandths. Um, and we're gonna just double check and make sure everything lines up perfect. We'll check our port uh, alignment since it's been port matched now, and uh, we'll make sure everything is buttoned up tight in that respect. All right, we're gonna just tape our gaskets down for right now. In the event that I whopper jaw the, the measurements, we can get some different gaskets in here at least. So I'm gonna tape this down. Use painter's tape so we don't use or mess up our. Uh, I'll do it that other gas. We don't mess up our paint job. Just line the ports up on, or line the gaskets up with the ports on the heads. And then I'm gonna slide in behind you and grab this intake manifold. I'm just gonna mock this up right quick. All right, so I'm looking at my end rails to make sure that I've got a good gap on a small block forward. The bolt holes are straight down. So when you tighten this up, it wants to wedge the intake in between the heads. And what happens is the intake will keep going down and down as you tighten it up. So your end rail gaps will get smaller as you tighten this up. On an FE, the bolts are normal to the cylinder head flange. So when you tighten that up, it may sink a little bit, but it doesn't sink as nearly as much as on a small block Ford. So if you give me a second, I'm gonna get my um, bore scope and we're gonna check out how the ports line up. All right, so I've got my bore scope. What we can do is go down the plenum. Hold on a minute here. Let me get this angled the correct way. All right, so what you're seeing on the right hand there is the top of the port, and you can see just a little bit of a, the head is, well, the intake is just a little bit higher than the head. But like I said, when we start to tighten all these bolts up, um, hold on a minute, I'm having trouble controlling my, scope here. When we tighten that down, the intake will, will scooch down a little bit, and what will happen is that will end up lining up. So we are in good shape, and um, what I can do now is glue my gaskets down, and um, on the weekends, I also do colonoscopies, so hit me up if you need one. All right, so we're just going to glue our gaskets down, and you just don't need very much silicone here at all. And I like to go around 
all the ports. This is very important on an FE since the ports are exposed to oil raining down from above. If you put intake gaskets on an FE without some kind of sealant, um, you're really lining yourself up for some trouble. This is Dow Coring 732. This is my silicone of choice. I use it on everything. Just make sure all the ports line up. And then we'll jump to the other side. All right, we got our gaskets glued down. What I'm going to do is just set this down temporarily, and that'll give us just a little bit of weight on on those gaskets, so that they'll be nice and and uh, adhered to the cylinder heads. While this is doing that, I'll, I'll give it 10 or 15 minutes. I'll go ahead and get all my bolts um, lined out with the washers and everything on them and get those ready to drop in. Alright, our gaskets are nice and, and glued down, so I'm going to come back with just an, a very light smear of silicone on the gasket side. When, um, when we do this for a race engine, um, if you can look back through the videos that we just did when I put the intake on, uh, JJ Jr. I use some white lithium grease because it's easy to get off but when I do it for a street engine for a customer um, I'm going to err on the side of safety and just make sure that there's no way that we have to do this over again or the customer has to do it over again I'm going to do all this in real time so you can see about how long it takes. It just doesn't take that long. Just be careful and get everything covered. Then you switch sides and do the other side. You don't want a bead. You just want a really thin smear just to fill any little imperfections in the gasket or in the intake manifold. The sound of lawnmowers in the background. All right. All right. So we're going to run our in rails, and you feel that little void right there, full of silicone. That's where the intake gasket and everything meets. And then you just follow your line with a nice fat bead right there. And then when you get to the other side, you fill it full. And I like to come up a little high on the intake. Then we do this side. And again, you feel that little void there. You just shove the shove it down in that little void and just fill it full.
and then come up. Okay. All right, I got our intake set down, and I went ahead and got my boroscope out to make sure that we got um, everything positioned the way that it needs to be. Just going to come through here and place all of our bolts. Really important, especially if you have aluminum heads, to put a little bit of something on on the threads. You don't want any galling, and you want to be able to get a good bite when you start to tighten everything up. We're going to start snugging these down. You can start, um, you can find a good, um, that's a tight fit. You can find a good torque sequence. Probably need to put a uh, socket head bolt on that. I'll see what I can do here in a second. Just snug them up. All right, one last pass, and I did switch this out to a, a socket head because of the clearance issues there. I think my ratchet has seen better days. I'm going to switch to my torque wrench. We'll go to 18 pound feet on this one. Here's what we're looking to see, just a nice consistent bead on each end with, with the right amount of coverage in that you can see where it's just starting to squirt out just right there. I'm going to leave that because that's where the head and the intake and everything meet. And we can go ahead and put our carb plate on so that nothing gets down in here and put our pipe plugs in. I use these um, stainless bolt kits from alloybolts.com. Bolts is spelt with a Z on the end of it. It comes with everything, even these uh, carb, carb studs. Now, my guess is this engine will want a little bit of carb spacer, so if that's the case, we'll have to switch out to a longer stud. But for now... 
Here's what we'll put on it. All right, next we're going to put our pipe plugs in. I'm using some Permatex thread sealant on this. Mr. Ron can put whatever fittings that he needs on those to hook up to his heater core or or whatever. And then here is a nice spot for some manifold vacuum if you need it. Then we're going to put our distributor in for the last time until the dyno session. Got plenty of movement there. Got our distributor hold down and bolt. So here's where the rotor is pointing. So I want my number one plug to be there. So I'm going to turn this ever so slightly. So there's number one. I'm making a, and we'll just mark it. So check it again, right there. Now I can tighten my clamp down. So my distributor can't move. And I can put my cap screws in. And that's ready to go. All right, so kind of skip forward a little bit. These are some cold, stiff, <laughs> plug wires and it looks like a bad hair day right now um, so I don't do a lot come on cooperate with me I don't do a lot with the plug wires before the dyno because the timing has to be adjusted a little bit and um, kind of have to dodge our headers and that sort of thing and I would advise my customers not to do much with looming all these up right now either until you get the engine in the car you know where your dipsticks gonna be you know where your headers are gonna be and then you can finagle everything else so we've got some polished aluminum valve covers got the breathers in there got our anodized aluminum water neck bypass hose everything's butter tight here distributor clamp is tight got our March pulleys got our Factory appearing alternator brackets, but they're brand spanking new. They look awesome. This thing is ready to put on the cradle and take to the dyno whenever we get a chance to do that. So, but there we go. Done and complete. When it gets about a week away from dyno time, I'll... Um, I'll prime the oil pump once more, and then uh, the night before or the morning of, I usually give her another good shot. Then we roll it over um, when we hook it to the dyno without the ignition on and bump the oil pressure up and then light it off. All right, guys, I hope you have seen some stuff that will help you on your own build. This guy right here is really giving me... On getting on my nerves. I'm going to have to reroute this when I put the phone down. But, um, yeah, thanks for sticking with me. Um, so I'm planning to have another video towards the end of the week. I'm picking up our tunnel port small block Ford heads um, and a set of FE heads that a customer dropped off for me to freshen up. Um, it'll be a good opportunity for us to have a good video on how to choose valve springs because I'm going to have to do some valve spring picking on both. 
and uh, that'll be a good video for us. Um, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out, and um, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.